Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Marine Bio Movie Club. We are really happy to have you join us for episode three. Today we are going to be discussing 47 meters down. Uh, in case you don't know who we are, my name is Taylor. I'm a marine biologist, shark diver, paddy dive master, free diver, etc. I am Kendra Nelson. I am the marine biologist and also a free diver. And we are really excited to discuss this movie because it's a pretty hilarious one. Um, <laughs> if you've never seen 47 meters down, go watch it and then come back and watch this. Um, if nothing else, just do it for your own entertainment because I promise yeah. you will not regret it. It's funny. Um, <laughs> the first thing I wrote down in my little like notes is I had to pay to watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not on Netflix. No, it's on Canadian Netflix. Oh, it's not on American Netflix. Okay, because I had to buy it on or rent it on Amazon, and I was like. And it wasn't like a cheap rental. It wasn't like one of those 99 cent ones. It was like $3.99. And I was like, oh. you know. Which is funny because it did really bad in theaters, I'm pretty sure. Because I worked at a movie theater when I first saw it and it was only out for a month. Yeah. And then we only showed it like at night. Yeah. Because I saw it at 11. <laughs> That's how I remember. I was like in high school. I brought one of my friends and I was like, oh, I get free movies whenever I want. Want to come see this stupid shark movie. And at 11 o'clock at night, we're sitting in the theater and everyone was laughing like was, the entire time. I mean, I will say halfway through the movie, I was like, this would be the most fun movie to film because they're like actually underwater the whole time. I was like, I want to be in a movie where I just get to <laughs> swim around and like pretend there's big, sh you know, like it was just yeah. hilarious. Um, also, if whatever reason during this episode I look really uncomfortable or my face is swollen, I did just get my wisdom teeth removed. So bear with me. I'm still like, it's still, I'm like doing okay. It's yeah, you like look great. Two or three, but it does kind of hurt to smile. So even though I'm having a lot of fun, I'm trying not to like smile. We'll make you laugh. <laughs> so the first thing that I wrote down is there's this like really long, spooky music like intro. And then oh, she yeah. like dramatically oh, spills wow. her red drink or whatever it's supposed to be. Mm. And um, I don't know if it's supposed to be like foreshadowing or whatever, but I was just like classic shark movie, <laughs> like the red in the water and stuff is just so funny. My first comments were like, I have no attachment to these characters at all. No. I was like, I don't know from a very like theater aspect I was like they did not do a great job of like building up my care for them because it's so like uh, no. we're in Mexico and your boyfriend and then your boyfriend breaks up with you and then yeah they I was, tried like, to like kind okay. of build a backstory of like I think it was more the backstory was more just to explain them as characters yeah. than it was to actually like build any attachment to them. Yeah, but then I was like, the, the thing, like, in a film, if you're not, like, attached, when they are getting attacked, it's like... They're just like, oh, okay. the whole time, I was rooting for them to get bitten by the shark. <laughs> when was, they did, it was like... They're not gonna get bit yet? Like, what is going on? I mean, it was just... I honestly, I wrote down, like, partway through the movie as well, I wrote down as basically just saying, this movie is not even scary because of the sharks. They're just kind of happy yeah. to also be sharks. <laughs> yeah, like sharks are an increased what is it, like stake. Stakes are already yeah. high yeah. for the other reasons. Oh, so bad. And we find out that they are in Mexico. I, it wasn't clear really by um, the film where in Mexico they were. Yeah. But if you look at the boat, it says Puerto de la Paz. Yeah. On the boat. And so that's kind of how you're able to pinpoint. Okay, so I I looked it up and La Paz, Mexico is south of Guadalupe. It's kind of hard to see. I'll pop up map up here. Yeah. Um Guadalupe Island is kind of the more famous spot in Mexico to go cage diving with white sharks, but um La Paz apparently is kind of near like Baja Peninsula area, so I wouldn't doubt that there's white sharks, yeah. but it's definitely not one of those areas that you hear about all the time. Um, 
cool. yeah so we kind of they also make a statement when they're at dinner and they're like we swim with 25 foot great white sharks all the time and i'm like that's a really big great white like that was really my biggest big thing was big. the size i was like so you're swimming with the biggest great whites recorded all in one area all like and they're all like and Guadalupe does have a reputation for having some of the bigger females like Deep Blue who was spotted here in Hawaii was or there. originally tagged in Guadalupe Island so it's yeah. not to say that they don't have really big great whites there all the time but 25 feet is still huge yeah that's like max it's like the outlier kind of yeah like obviously there are some that hit that length and that size or whatever but it's but not, not like by any means yeah no so that was a little like meh kind of thing Us. um also she's like texting her ex in the morning and she would i was like oh girl don't text your ex. <laughs> and part of two when they're trying to convince her that she should go on the shark dive that she's not wanting to down for basically it's they they're like oh it'll make you stort so jealous like don't you want all the picture do it for the gram basically like, basically yeah do it for the gram and do it to like spite your ex yeah and first of all you should not go shark diving for a boy or to yeah. get back at a boy, you should go shark diving because it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fun. I get like the net, like part of me was like, oh, don't do that. Like peer don't pressure. Do that. At the same time, I, like when we went out with my my dad and my mom, she paid for a ride along. We were like, come on, get in. And she was like, Oh yeah, for sure. Now. I mean, but it's like, all fun and games until your cage falls to the bottom of the ocean, you know? Then yeah, that would be scary. It's really the movie is laid out so interestingly because like you said there's no connection really to the characters it's so short it's like so the beginning short. is so short honestly i think the movie would have been a lot better had they made that beginning part like half of the movie yeah. i hated that part where she's like we can stay out all night i was like i don't care <laughs> yeah because honestly the movie at some point you get kind of bored yeah, I got bored. And I well, I was You're also like, watching right. it, so I didn't know if it was just me because I was like, I've seen this, I'm like remembering it. I obviously know more now because I've I know how to right. dive now. Mm -hmm. And I was I've like, I've never seen the full movie. I kind of when it came out in theaters, I was like, I'm not paying money to go see this crappy shark movie. <laughs> um but I never seen the shark movie through. I saw. Hmm? It's the last shark movie I saw. Yeah. Um, I never saw the other ones that came out after. I mean, honestly, I don't have anything against people going and seeing movies like this. I think they're oh, yeah. entertaining and extremely funny. hilarious. It's just, it sounds like a waste of money. My stance is like, I'm not going to, it's not like boycott shark movies because they're yeah. untrue. I think they're hilarious. It's just a waste of my money. <laughs> yeah. I think more the issue comes into when people assume that the sharks that they see in movies like this are the reality of all sharks in the ocean. Yeah, there should be like a disclaimer. Right, which is just not true. Um, and like, to your point, I don't feel the need to go spend my money on a movie like this. Yeah. But it, I did this time. But um, Do it for the YouTube. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I don't know. But we get to the point where these random Mexican boys that they met at the bar convinced them to go cage diving with great white sharks. And honestly, this sounds like something that I would easily be convinced yep. to do. <laughs> um, however, if I would have pulled up to that boat, I would have said, take my ass back Goodbye. to shore, please. <laughs> like, I would have been very, oh my gosh. It is the sketchiest. Oh, I feel like it's also, I was kind of thinking, I was like, had to be in Mexico. I don't know. Maybe that was just like my thoughts. I, mean, I was like, I get why. Cause like I've gone to Mexico and I've definitely seen it's a the sketch. very sketchy, like tourism. I wouldn't say tourist traps because I mean, they take you out. It's just not the safest, mm -hmm. but I, I, I also, I love Mexico and there's like the great stuff like in Guadalupe that are mm -hmm. obviously going to be safer. 
and there's obviously going to be places in Cabo, the U.S. that are Baja, probably sketchy. Yeah. yeah. There's really great operators in a lot of those places. There's also not so great it's operators, which they were clearly yeah. kind of parroting or picking the up The rusty on. cage. That cage is sketchy. <laughs> I'm not surprised they fell to the bottom of the ocean in oh, that no. thing. But yeah, sketchy cage, sketchy boat. They get out to... I will appreciate they did at least make it appear as though they drove offshore Mm -hmm. because at first I was like are they gonna pretend to like go cage diving with great whites over this reef yeah the reef area they like drive through the reef and then they eventually make it farther out but um I thought it was also hilarious they get there and they throw like the smallest little maybe like two gallon bucket of chum in the Um. water and that's it and I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's not going to do anything. 25 foot great whites are going to come real hungry. Yeah. Unless you could visibly see the shark right there. One little bucket is not going to do anything. Yeah. I've never chummed for sharks. So like, I was just like, oh. I mean, I've done a ton of beta diving in Florida where I'm originally from and even then there are already kind of like sharks in that general area. And even then you still have to like spend a decent amount of time to get them. Yeah. It's not necessarily that you need like a ton of volume, but you do kind of have to like trickle it out so that there's at least this like stream of scent for them to kind of come into the area or at least to pick up on because there's this sort of, and we talk about it all the time on the boat, there's this myth that sharks can smell a drop of blood from a mile away. And that's yeah. not, that's not true. Um, sharks like humans have to actually have a particle of that scent reach their scent glands, like within their nostrils. So the part that makes sharks really impressive when it comes to their scent is that it can be an extremely small concentration Mm-hmm. So they can smell about a drop of blood in about the size of an Olympic size pool when it comes down to concentration wise, which is obviously still insane, but the drop of blood does have to travel to the shark. Yeah. So and so technically, yes, if like the current's pushing in the right direction and all of these different physical features of the ocean align perfectly, sure, maybe eventually if the source of blood is over here a mile away, a shark could potentially pick up on that scent. Yeah. But it's not this immediate, like, Oh, we dropped the blood. Oh, shark. found. Isn't there, there's even like, I saw a study that talked about the type of blood used. And it was, I think mammal blood, different kinds of fish, human, and like it will land mammal and marine mammal. Mm -hmm. And they'll even be able to distinguish the type of fish they prefer. So like, a non-local fish they won't mm-hmm. go for yeah. and of course like they may investigate but like for the most part no sharks are really really immediate. smart and honestly pretty picky and like you said this study mm-hmm. that you're probably referring to there's a ton of studies out there um the one that we always talk about when we're on the boat is i believe it was done by neil hammerschlag at university of miami but testing different blood types and seeing brain reactivity in sharks mm-hmm. And I'll see if I can find the actual study so I can pop it up. So if you guys want to read it or I'll put it in the description. Um, if not, I'll, I, there's a ton of different studies done on sharks. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, if you haven't watched Mark Robert's YouTube video, he does a great one where he cool. goes out to the Bahamas. I think there was like, a shark week special. About yeah, it. there's tons of different stuff, um, but I'll link a couple of resources, I guess, down in the description. But um, Yeah, sharks, really smart, pretty picky. There's a lot of evidence out there that they can tell the difference between blood sources, between species when it comes to blood sources. Mm. Sharks do not react to human blood or human urine or just like our scent. We are not part of their natural food chain. It's basically the equivalent of smelling something like a pizza, which is obviously if you don't like pizza, there's something wrong with you. And then smelling something like perfume as humans, just because perfume might smell nice. Sometimes doesn't it doesn't, eat it. doesn't mean you want to eat it. Yeah. And it's the same way with sharks for our blood to even elicit like 
a curiosity response, we would have to be losing more volume of blood than we even have in our body. Yeah. And so, I like, I like sharing the study about those different, like even reef fish, because it shows even just how they're not going to go for even the blood of a fish. They may not just be like eating regularly. It's so like a little reef fish that's like bleeding or something that's not going to maybe spark a huge interest. So it's like, why would a human who they're definitely not going to eat. Who evolved on land is not part of the ocean environment. They're going to go for us. No. So the amount of chum that they're using, I would be amazed if it attracted as many large great whites as it did in the movie. Also just three big girls. Yeah. I don't know. It was just that whole, the way they sort of, it's very sensationalized, which is, you know, whatever, fine for entertainment. They really sped through it. You know, they're just trying to get them to the point where they're in the cage. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it just, it's just bad. Do you think, do you think Cressy (laughs) put there, did you notice the, the Cressy BCD? Oh no. I was I like, I wonder if that's a little like a little drama. sponsorship. But yeah, there was a rip, she was wearing a rip curl wetsuit. I saw that. And a big old Cressy. Also, BCD. the wetsuits that they were wearing. Oh. Based on the ocean that they should have been swimming in, mm-hmm. those girls would have died of hypothermia. Yeah, that was really well, that's Matt was like, wouldn't they be really cold? I was like, yeah. oh yeah. Once they get down there, like they could probably be fine. Like, you know, Ocean's done like the bikini cage diving in Guadalupe. Like you'd be okay. For like 10 minutes. Maybe. Yeah. But for like the long, like if, if it was just, if they didn't. They were sink. supposedly down there at least an hour because that's yeah. how long it took the Coast Guard to get there. Yeah. So probably two hours, an hour. I don't know. Yeah. They're very cold. I mean, we get cold. She didn't even have sleeves. In, yeah. The one didn't have sleeves. Or legs. Neither of them had neither of them had legs, and then Lisa. I don't. There's neither like Lisa and Kate. Blonde girl. So and the Mandy blonde Moore. one didn't have pants or arms. Yeah, she had arms. She, she had a spring have, suit. Yeah, it was just. Yeah. I get cold in and they probably a did spring that suit for, like, and leggings. Filming purpose. Honestly, they were probably even cold filming if they were spending like prolonged. Because even like a rip curl wetsuit is what going to be. And depending on what kind you get, it's like 1.5 mil for like yeah. a surf suit. I doubt they were thicker than maybe two millimeters. Yeah. Which get cold. You I get very I cold. I freeze in a five mil <laughs> in like 70 something degree water. You're, I always think of you when people ask about how cold it is to dive in Hawaii. I'm like, I'm like ask my friend Taylor. Depends on the person. I clearly am maybe like on the colder of the spec. People go out and dive in their bikini all the time. And I've done it. I, but I get cold in like 20 minutes. It's for fun. You're like, pictures. Well, yeah. Goodbye. It's more just like to be free and to like feel the water on your skin and stuff. Yeah. The girls that are able to do that all the time, honestly, like props to you. Like you'll I, very rarely yeah. see me in a picture in just a spring suit or in my bikini because I'm freezing. It's really cold. I saw a girl here who di- who ice dives in a bikini. No. Excuse me? Uh Uh-uh. Like for long periods of time? She does it not all the time. And the only, she she said she only lasts like 20 minutes and then she gets out. But I was like, um, I can barely walk into the ocean and walk out. Like I'm going to go swimming with my friend in like a couple weeks and I'm wearing the whale shark spring suit. She wears Mm -hmm. a bikini. She's like, oh, we're in for like two seconds. I'm like, (laughs) Mm -mm. not me. (laughs) I am wearing the wetsuit. I'm good. Thank you. Um, yeah, but they would have froze. Also, before they even start, first of all, Mandy Moore, her character, I don't know. I honestly, I'm going to have to refer to them by their actual names because I don't remember their yeah, character names. Mandy. But Mandy Moore doesn't know how to dive. <sighs> and the, the, the operator totally picks up on it. Which Oh, for sure. I've been on some. And to be fair, like you can do these Discover Scuba programs. I've taught them. I've done them. Yeah. As part of my like dive master. And it's not to say it can't be done. And Mm -hmm. technically, yes, initially the cage is only at 15 feet or about like five meters is what they claim in the movie. So it's not like if she just bolted to the surface, like nothing's going to happen. She's not at a depth where she would really have to worry about decompression sickness and things. Mm -hmm. Um, But still, 
weird to me I'm like yeah maybe don't. well I mean and, and like they're the the dive group or shop that certifies the students that are at my university they were not the best at safety like right after you get certified they offer if anyone wants to do sea tiger and they told us you have to have a certain amount of dives logged but then they were trying to get me to go and I had two and yeah. I wasn't comfortable and then they also were getting trying to get us to go on the night dive which again I only had two which were my certification I mean, dives it happens and it's a lot. doable but like it's one it of those like lot, especially I, yeah. in vacation destinations yeah where it's, it's not shocking that he let it right so it doesn't Why? shock me necessarily that the operator in this movie is just like eh, whatever especially because yeah. they're clearly doing some sketchy sketchy things um, rusty cage <laughs> yeah the other thing too is there are submersible cage operations but nowadays especially with newer regulations that have been put on cage operations especially in places like Guadalupe Island in Mexico um a lot of times nowadays the cage is actually at the surface yeah I was say don't they have floats on them and I know that's how the time, it's yeah. actually like hookah not full scuba tank so mm-hmm. not all the time it I'm sure it varies very much based on um operator and what you're doing and I know that there are still operators that do submersible cages um but I most of what I've seen and the majority of what I've heard is that nowadays majority of cages are surface because we're heating at the surface anyway so a lot of the times the whites are coming up to that level anyway so there's not really this need as much anymore nowadays to drop the cage and a lot of times too except um, for a movie right there's still and sometimes too there's not even a lid or like a top yeah i would say i don't think not all the time there are still i don't think when i did it there was yeah there are still some you're right there and we're snorkels like we didn't even Mm -hmm. have yeah well i know like the cage operators here in hawaii there's no top they're yeah. also de- dealing with species that don't breach. So yeah. not probably as necessary. Um, I, and again, I'm sure it depends on operator, all that kind of stuff. But it's definitely not like the enclosed lockable top mm. like it shows in the movie. Um, they also start with 200 bar, which is like around 2,900 PSI, which is just what I'm used to converting to. Yeah. Um, so they technically had like a normal full tank. But if they weren't on nitrox, at 47 meters, which is like around 140-ish, maybe yeah. a little bit more than that feet, which is out of recreational diving limits yep. to begin with, even a full tank will not last you maybe more than like 20 minutes. I think, yeah, I think I looked it up and once they sink down, she says they have 20 minutes, but it actually would have been more around 11 because once also when you're decreasing, you're using up more air because it's, com- so it's you not like more it's, air. It's, I mean, we, and that's just separate from like no deco. Yeah. That's also like experienced divers. They hundred percent would have had decompression sickness very mm-hmm. quickly, no matter what they did. Like, honestly, the whole movie, I was like, just risk it. Get the bends. Do your best to get back to the surface at this Yeah, point. that's what I was thinking. I was like... Like, it, it would still be bad for you. But like, it's you not the... better imme- chances of survival. He was setting it up that you would that. die immediately. Which, in extreme cases, like, can I guess happen. it can happen. But for the most part, like, when risking but the fact on, that you're low on air... Stop. Yeah, the risk other... The sharks. <laughs> risk the sharks! Like... Go- they didn't I have the flares, I mean, Taylor. Uh, I mean, they I didn't know have the flare. <laughs> I know that they are great whites, which I don't personally have any experience with. So it's not like I can be like, oh, they're fine and whatever. Yeah, but I would risk it. I would risk it, especially like with the air. Like it's very reckless of the operator to have said to stay down there because he definitely would have known you're going to run out faster. And if the Coast Guard's going to take an hour, like he can totally factor no in way. the time. Like the time- yeah. Ugh, he should God. have said, "Risk it, come up, then we will yeah. rush you back." And like you know, the timeline of the movie is not very yeah. accurate, and so yeah. we're going to have to just 
that's take that. it separately that from that, that because it's just the whole timeline of like how long their air would have lasted yeah because there's so many more how facts. quickly they would have been narked also like all that kind you should of have stuff. Had, they both should have had burst ear eardrums not to mention the fact that they're talking but their ears are not in their mask so that was one thing i was like hmm yeah you're uh, i've gotten an ear infection and okay. not almost an, a burst eardrum from diving at one ocean because i didn't fully equalize down 15 feet yeah well so, even if you so Mandy Moore's character has never dove before. And before mm -hmm. she even gets in the cage, they're like mm -hmm. trying to teach her how to equalize, which first of all, the method that they try and teach her to equalize with, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. no hands equalization, who? <laughs> I know Willow can do it. Oh, there's people that can. I don't know many Connor, who can, very experienced. My people. boyfriend can do it. Really? It's a waste of a gift. I, yeah, I've tried I to get know Willow how. to teach you. <laughs> I'm like, can you train you me? Can't, like, so you can technically train yourself to no hands equalize, but it takes a long time. And from what I've heard, it's a very like, just difficult thing to is. learn because it's like, it's one of those things I feel like where until it just somehow clicks, yeah, then you know how to do it. I can really do it on explain. planes and I practice when I fly because it's a similar motion. But once I'm in the water, I it doesn't really work. It's worked yeah. once, but I was only like 20 feet. Right. So the fact that they're trying to teach her to equalize with a no hands approach, which is definitely not the easiest way I would say to equalize. It's probably because um, I don't know if they could reach their nose with their true talkable tank or not tank mask. Yeah, I don't know. But also very highly developed, a very fancy mask. They do have it. those like yeah. full head situations. I've never used one, so I can't really speak to exactly how they work. I've never really had any interest. In I them. looked up an article and they said that it was very high tech and not it something is. that is like. I know Jim Abernathy widely. has one, that but means. that's the only person that I know. Not I Mandy Moore. Like wreck divers so that they can speak. Yeah. Via walkie talkie and stuff will use them, but it's not. Rusty cage, ask. but talking in your mask. Yeah. Clearly that's the priority. Right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they're trying to teach her how to equalize and it's just not what I would personally try and teach someone how to do. Yeah. And then the rate, even if you were the best equalizer in the face of, in the whole world, even if you could equalize so fast, the rate at which they were falling to the bottom, there's no way. Nope. I'm sorry. Plus like you'd have to say like, you would have to just be really able to immediately go for it. You would have to continuously just blow, 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 mm -hmm. blow, 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 and blow. not be panicking, which I think yeah. even an experienced diver would be panicking in maybe that situation. They should have been dead upon the fall, in all honesty. Yeah. In my opinion. And if somehow they survived the fall, they would not have been okay. <laughs> they wouldn't have been able to lift the cage because that also would have then exerted more energy for more air. Well, There's I just mean like your ears would have been. Yeah, your ears would have been royally gone. screwed. Yeah. And if anything, the pain from that probably would have just made you. You would have passed out, I'm sure. Yeah. You would have Which blown both eardrums. Well, even if, even if, let's say, you made it to the bottom, you didn't die upon impact or you didn't get hit in the head and pass out or yeah. whatever, you didn't pass out from the pain of your ears, even if you still re remained conscious. Anything in your inner ear, you are dizzy beyond belief. Yeah. Even I know people that have ruptured like parts of eardrums or just like torn little things in their ear, which have been like in the grand scheme of things, very minor. It's obviously still pretty serious, but even those little minor things, they can't even sit up. So there's no way that these two girls falling really fast to the bottom of the ocean <laughs> somehow if remain conscious are like coherent and not only did they survive they went on to battle sharks <laughs> and i and lift a cage and all you know yeah i will say i think my favorite part of the whole film was when they were physically hiding from a shark behind a rock oh yeah 
Meanwhile, really bubbles going. are coming out and <laughs> scuba's, I was like, mm-hmm, that is and exactly the noise how and the, that works. Yeah. You hide behind a rock and it goes and it swims away. Yeah, overall, the movie is just a complete mess. I will totally. say I did enjoy the, um, there were some parts that I was like, you know, sure. Yeah. If, if, if we're assuming that you survived and this is what's happening, you're doing okay. We're already getting rid of belief. You're, yeah, you're not. Like, if we're ignoring all the facts of what reality should be. Yeah. The physics and science of diving. Yeah. I mean, even just, even if you were able to equalize and you didn't bust your ears and you didn't get hit by the cage, plummeting to that depth that quickly, you would have to, like, burst some. Like, obviously, going up to the surface is normally worse. Yeah than plummeting to the ground yeah however the rate at which you were doing that I find it really hard that like your gear or just your body would be able to handle that sort of pressure that quickly the acting is not great in the movie no. just in general no. um also there's no way that later on as like the movie progresses the more experienced diver runs out of air quicker than like Mandy's more character does. Who's Who was screaming and panicking. Unexperienced diver. And technically, I guess, yes, in the first part of the movie, the more experienced diver is like y- using more effort, getting the cage to move, getting out of the cage, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But it's I still find it really unlikely. Yeah. That even then, even at the surface, the way she was breathing, I'm like, this girl's going to be out of air in 10 minutes. Yeah, she's like, <gasps> oh, I ran out of air on a dive. I, yeah, I, 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 when I was first really learning, fast. I went on a deep dive. It was my first, I had, I was, um, I was not advanced certified yet. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have these stories where they go on dives that they're technically not certified certified yet for, which I'm not going to say was the smartest thing on my part, about. but I did it. I got certified in Florida. Most of my dives for open water were in springs, in lakes. So I pretty much was certified open water and had never dove in the ocean before, which is pretty common. Um, But most people don't dive down to a hundred feet on their first ocean dive. Yeah. Uncertified to do so. I would say that's accurate. Um, And for me, I wasn't necessarily like panicking. I was just kind of stressed and also excited yeah and being excited you breathe that's mine I was a a, an air guzzler my certification dives in Shark's Cove Mm -hmm. and now I have I would like to believe that I have pretty good air consumption I normally do all right but um yeah on this dive I remember the instructor that I was with telling me like okay when you're at a thousand psi let us know we'll start Mm -hmm. heading back up kind of thing and that's about a third of what we had in the tank which makes sense and we get down there not three minutes later I'm like "Mm, like I gotta go (laughs) and the instructor looks at me and goes one second and I'm like no 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 I gotta go (laughs) like especially as like a new nervous excited you know like I was so excited it was a beautiful location and we actually went back the, the next day and I did it again and was like completely fine it was just kind of the nerves of that like Mm-hmm. okay I'm in the ocean for the first time scuba diving I'm going to this depth that I'm technically not supposed to go to I'm nervous because I'm kind of stressed but I'm also like really excited because this is super cool it was just like a lot of things yeah and I remember where my instructor is like okay fine I'll take you back kind of thing like maybe assuming that I wasn't out of air I don't know whatever yeah so it's taking me back up and we're doing our safety stop and I I'm out all of a sudden I'm like oh no and luckily when I learned to my open water scuba my instructors were really good and they um would come and turn off our air out of nowhere so that we at least knew what it would kind of feel like and so I could feel it kind of coming I was like oh no like I'm out I'm out and my instructor that I was with didn't have a an emergency regulator Mm -hmm. so we ended up having to buddy breathe which is fine 
Yeah. But I also. Oh my gosh, I would have been dying. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, and luckily, like, like I survived. So holding my breath, I'm not like panicked or anything. Oh, okay. But she gives me her like regulator, and then uh-huh. she literally points. We're maybe like two feet from the surface. <laughs> like I could have easily just like like looked up, and like. Breathe, like yeah gone up yeah and um but and now looking back it was just funny and whatever and like it was fine but in the moment but I've run out of air it's not a good time and you could very easily whether you're really excited or really nervous or scared or whatever it is you can suck up that air pretty fast even if you have a full tank yeah so the reality is that they should have been out of air a lot sooner. Yes. When, like, when I first started diving, I struggled to equalize like crazy. Mm-hmm. And that was, like, one of my biggest things. And because especially because when they, they taught me, they were, like, blow gently. And I was blowing gently and nothing was happening. And then finally, like, this other instructor who wasn't there before it was, like, blow hard. And I was, like, they told me not to. But I finally did it. And I do have to, I for a long time, I had to blow really hard to equalize. Um, and now it's gotten better kind of trained to do it too yeah but I was like she just again the equalizer thing and then I was excited and I used up air really fast and yeah just they definitely should have been out of out of air way faster than they were but yeah she also like gets out and like takes her mask off at some point and she's not blowing a continuous stream of bubbles yeah yeah. I I thought that I was like I may have I may not be I do not I know a lot of people that like take a picture and won't blow bubbles and stuff and I've done it before too and the reality is she's not changing depth so she probably was fine oh okay well yeah it's more if like you just should do it out of good habit that's more why they teach you to it's more so because if you were to change depths at all and you weren't exhaling that's not good that can lead to like air embolism in your lungs and things like Mm -hmm. that um the reality is if she was kind of just staying at the same depth, it probably would have been fine, but it's good practice to yeah. at least have a little bit of movement. You're never supposed to hold your breath when you're scuba diving. And then she, the like sharks come back kind of, and like, they like grab onto the cage. I'm like, are there any teeth? <laughs> Cause I'm crazy. I'm like, Ooh, teeth, teeth. Are there oh, any yeah. teeth falling out? Like, give me one of those. Um, and my boyfriend goes, he's just trying to free you guys. He's helping. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. But, um, and then there's that one point too. And they're like, they left us. And I'm like, you know, they ended up not leaving them. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I wouldn't be surprised. If I that totally, happened. I definitely thought that they did leave them. When I oh, yeah, first saw it, for some reason, I think my brain was like, oh, they get abandoned. And then. Mm-hmm. Or they leave until the Coast Guard instead of staying. But I definitely thought they got abandoned. And I was like, oh. oh, I 100% was like, yeah, they left you. Goodbye. I'm sure it happens. Go on a crappy, sketchy tour. This is what, yeah, every man yeah. for himself. Yeah, you, YOLO. Bye-bye. So spoiler alert, jumping to the very end of the movie, turns oh, yeah. out that Mandy Moore's character has been narked the whole time. That sounds so So it. I think the point at which she gets narked is when she switches switching over to the tank. second tank. Yeah. And so this part, so he, she should have been narked a long ass time ago, especially as a new yeah. diver. But I mean, I have friends that are dive masters that can't go past 70 feet because they immediately get narked. Yeah. I was like reading, that's what I was reading online is people it. are just like, I get narked at this depth. Mm-hmm. So I just am used to, and, but they, but it's very different than how it's portrayed. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, yeah, you're I'm not sure like on mushrooms. Narked enough, you definitely do hallucinate. But yeah, not a full uh, shroom flare fantasy. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah. So jumping ahead, basically, Mandy Moore's character was narked, and so she imagines the whole rescue situation. Yeah, basically. Which um, would I feel like that that kind of gets rid? I was like, oh, this that part has one of the sketchier. Di- well, obviously the whole thing is sketch, but when he has them do a decompression stop at twenty meters and then just shoot up, he's like, go go. I was like, that's the worst place to just shoot up. I mean, yeah, but also like, mm. yeah, I guess if like sharks are coming at you again, it is like 
you won't again i'm like risk it with the beginning impression honestly yeah. which yeah, when, when you're evaluating everything else obviously decompress like risking it and then but i was just like yeah. mm. That kind of makes the sense. The reality if she, is, if, if I was in this different. situation, God forbid it never happens. If I was ever in a situation where my cage did fall to the bottom of the ocean, somehow I survived and I didn't burst my eardrums and whatever, mm-hmm. I would have been like, you know what? If I get eaten by a shark today, this is the least of my worries. Yeah. There so are many I'm factors gonna, that are against me today. So I'm just going to slowly start to surface I'm gonna do my decompression stop and it is actually longer than five minutes yeah if you were at that depth for that long you would have to do I believe a 10 minute stop there's the yeah I think they gave us a times table that you can like yes you do have a times table and it shows you um I believe and correct me if I'm wrong if you're a scuba diver because I I oh, don't I, I purposely I don't, don't go into no deco so I haven't really needed to use this information if it were me I would have done a 10 minute no deco stop somewhere between 30 and 40 feet and then I would have done another five to eight five minute deco stop at 20 feet or 15 feet and then gone um if I would have had enough air likely wouldn't have yeah. um, and some operations not being chased actually, by three giant sharks and some operations for that reason if they are doing really deep dives will actually drop a second tank on a tether at the like decompression depth so mm-hmm. that way if for whatever reason someone does go past their no deco limits and they have to do an extended decompression stop and they may not have enough air they can switch their tank out yeah. and still continue their no decompression stop oh one thing i maybe they they showed her how to hook up her tank Oh, there's no way. But there, when she was in the water doing it, I was like, yeah. no, no, honey. Also, no. I mean, it, obviously in emergency situations, you can hook up a new tank when you're underwater, but most of the time you're supposed to keep your O-ring dry mm-hmm. in your tank. And so you're not really supposed to switch tanks underwater. I'm sure in emergency situations, again, never had to do it, but I'm sure in an emergency situation, like it's better than dying. There's other risks. Yeah. Yeah. But you're not really supposed to get the o-ring wet and to your point a new diver that's never dove before i'm sure i could figure it out you look at the circle you look at the circle you put them together and she's eventually like, you can figure it out yeah. but she's also panicked which panicked. means that you're not necessarily thinking straight she's running out of air she's holding her breath like all those different things i would be surprised if she, she that quickly i would be surprised if figure it out if I was thrown in the water and I could do it. Cause I'm just thinking I have not scuba dove for uh, probably a year and a half. A long time. I definitely need a refresher. Cause that's like the one part I'm like, I probably could figure Like I could probably look at it and do it, but I'm thinking off the top of my head. I'm like, I, mm. I mean, to be fair, all the cords and stuff are already, all of her tubes are already hooked up to like her BC and to her regulator. Yeah. So really all she's having to do is take the actual component from the tank and, and, and switch it yeah. which is a lot easier than figuring out where every single thing is supposed to go but still to your point yeah i'm like mm. mandy moore i'm so sorry i have no faith in you yeah sorry mandy. your character <laughs> um the jump scares got me on this movie <laughs> i will say oh i forgot about the flare i definitely one. when um <laughs> when um Oh, shoot. Let me find it. I'm trying to figure out. There were two jump scares. The first one was when... The camera? Um, the first they one dropped was the camera when and it, like, the dude <sighs> came down. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. sh- she's, like, running away from the shark, and he grabs her, and she turns around, and then the shark just, like, fully just decapitates him. Yeah. And then the second one was when the blonde girl got bit by the shark, and it kind of, like... Yeah, came towards the camera. I yelled for both. <laughs> I was like, "Oh!" <laughs> I think the first one where they where the shark eats the camera. I was like, "Oh, I f- oh my gosh, hello!" Yeah, I just so funny. And I mean, there are people that I've talked to that have gone like cage diving in Guadalupe and stuff. And Guadalupe, by far, has the best visibility out of almost anywhere that you can cage dive with great whites. Great like whites, compared yeah. to a South Africa or an, even in like an Australia most of the locations that have white sharks have pretty murky water like California that kind of thing 
Guadalupe is known to have like 100 plus foot visibility when yeah. it comes to their waters, which is why it's such an amazing place to go cage diving with great whites. But even then I've heard because of their speed, because of their counter shading and their camouflage and all that kind of stuff, sometimes those sharks disappear and reappear extremely quickly. So the jump scares could be pretty accurate. I mean, just yeah. in like shark behavior sense, but when if they were hunting too, because like yes. they're it's not like just casually like hi and right. coming in slow, they would be coming in fast. Okay. Yeah. Um there's also a point where the blonde Claire Holt's character, the blonde individual is telling Mandy Moore when she has to go out and get the flashlight, she tells her how to use her BCD wrong. Oh yeah, to- She says, press this to inflate to go up. No, yeah. that's like one of the number one, it's not the number one rule in scuba diving. Number one rule is to always breathe, mm -hmm. but it's up there on the list. Do not inflate not the inflate BCD it. to go mm -hmm. up. It's the opposite. You inflate yeah. as you go down, you deflate as you go up. So yeah. that way you don't just all of a sudden skyrocket. Like shoot up, yeah. And she's basically just trying to teach her how to stay level, right? I think so. I she's don't She's like, know. yeah, I think that was, that was like, they could have just, not, I don't know why they include that. She's like, stay close to the seat. Or if floor. they're going to include it, say it right. Yeah, that too. Like if you felt the need that it was so important to include this one line, maybe make it accurate. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, they, you could have just cut it because she did not. She also wasn't wearing fins, which I noticed at this point. Which, which I get is, why they're in a cage. Can be normal in the cage. Yeah. A lot of times they won't actually have them wear fins. It's cold, so most people wear booties. Yeah, but, but that definitely would have hurt her her swimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about it because I've swam without fins, and most of the time I I was a swimmer for a long time, not using fins. So it's not like it's detrimental to your swimming ability. But when you go from wearing something like free diving fins or scuba fins. And taking those off and all of a sudden having no fins and you're trying to swim you feel like you are moving nowhere yeah so i was just laughing i was like she's not out running a shark <laughs> she doesn't have fins no well and then like the exertion again more she would have been running out of air because they're not just sitting she's like trekking to get the flashlight which they barely even need they went to go get it because they thought the guy was with it which i understand mm -hmm. But at that point, once you get it, it's like, oh, cool. You just wasted. Also, <laughs> missed opportunity. When that dude dies, take his tank. I think she said it was damaged. Oh. I think, oh, I think the, the blonde. I must have missed that part. I think there was a comment that his tank got damaged. Mm, okay. And that I was why. I must have missed that part because I was like, you I was missed like, an opportunity his body, to have pull him with you. <laughs> and take his tank and then they you drop down the body the just take the tank yeah but yeah i think that was that comment was made another missed opportunity even if his tank was damaged try and knock the top off that thing shoot it at the sharks man yeah push his body off like there was i was just whatever mm -hmm. but yeah it's just a ridiculous i mean i'm like if you're already going to be this ridiculous of a movie, you might as well go full. Go extreme. In, go full on, you know? Shoot the sharks with the, with the tank. Why not? The spear gun. Which they never even ended up using. Yeah, she used it to grab the tank and then she cut her hand. And that was it. Which I hate, bl I hate blood. And I Do was you? like, oh, I. Not a good movie for you. I, no. Well, no Maybe we I mean, shouldn't watch it, shark movies. That part was fine. I hate, um, like, the cutting. Like injuries. Mm hmm. I, for example, last year I was making avocado toast, typical you at like 7 a.m. And I stabbed my hand, like my finger. I almost passed out walking from the kitchen to the couch. Oh. I had grabbed a hair tie and I was like holding it and I, I called Matt and I was like, I need you to come over. Help I'm me. literally about to pass out. I'm gushing blood. And he was like, from what? I was like, I was pitting an avocado. And I almost passed out three different times trying to rinse it off. And then walk from my kitchen to the couch, not a far distance. I'm not good with bloods, but bloods, blood, but specifically like when you see a cut, oh, I yeah. cannot do it. So surgery, mm -mm, no. Yeah. No, no. But yeah, it's yeah, just different. <laughs> just, but that kind of, 
so when she cut her hand, I was kind of like, mm, and it made a sound. So I was like, no. Yeah. Also, they start banging on the cage to that like would have... show him direction. Mm-hmm. Humans cannot hear direction underwater, but you know who can? Sharks. Sharks. So when they're banging, trying to get, or when she's trying to come back, or I don't even remember. Yeah. She's like, bang on it when you see my light. Yeah. And then she starts banging. That would not, I mean, that could work because you're like using the direction in combination with it, but you can't just make noise and expect another human to find it. Yeah. It doesn't work. Well, because like directional wise, it's also thrown. I don't know. It's just like, okay. The using the light that could work because that could work. like it basically gives you a stopping point. But <laughs> if she didn't have like that reference and they were just banging kind of thing, like you're not gonna know where that's coming from. I feel like the only thing I hear underwater is okay. I always think of when Ocean squeaks it when she would do her well, dolphin see, calls. Humans. We can hear underwater a lot better than yeah. we can on land because sound technically does travel a lot faster underwater yeah. than it does in air. But as humans, we don't have the ability to, to distinguish where that noise is coming from. Yeah, the that's the yeah. air. So you can hear things and like the reason like ocean's call is so effective or you can hear a passing boat or you can hear whatever is because you're able to hear that noise. Yeah. But the call that she like ocean makes is more just hey turn around so you yeah. can hear it it doesn't really matter where she what is. you're doing you just know like okay right which i'm always like where are you yeah. i will look at you to tell me what to do <laughs> right so it's kind of that same idea it's more just yeah as humans we can't we can't hear a direction so little it's, bit yeah when you're adding in a directional and it's dark and like they're murky Sh- anyway yeah. there's a lot going on anyway the movie. movie's just kind of a poop show and a half it's just not very well done um but eventually they use the flare to scare off the sharks which i'm like i don't know what you think that's gonna do but okay sure i've never done it so i can't say that it would i cannot personally say that flares will scare off sharks (laughs) yeah and you know honestly i would be very interested to see if it works but it's but, so automatic. That's the thing. It's it, it, the, the idea that they're literally waiting in the darkness and then you light a flare and they're like, me. Yeah. I don't know. They were all three of them coming in at the same time with their mouths wide open. Yeah. I feel like at least one of them would have been like, I'm going to risk it. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. But, but yeah, they, they make it to the surface and they get attacked by the sharks and they like bite off her leg and things like that. Um. And then we realized that it was all just a hallucination and she's still at the bottom of the ocean. Her sister did actually get, their sisters are, their sisters. I are they friends? So. I think they're sisters. I think they're sisters. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Either way, sisters from other misters or they're just yeah. friends, whatever. But basically it ends up being that she, the dude did die. The sister, sister is, did die. Mm-hmm. She's just in the cage and then the Coast Guard comes and rescues her. Yeah. Worst ending ever. When the movie ended, I was like, I wanted it it to be, I wanted to see her sad in a hospital. I'm not going to lie. I wanted to see her sad in a hospital. I wanted a better explanation of what actually happened. That, yeah, that too. You know, like I needed the, I almost like, you know, like the post Titanic scene where she goes back, she throws the necklace. I needed something like that. Do they say that it's narc? Do they narcosis. say the word narcosis in the film? Because I remember thinking it was all the bends. No, they do say, okay. um, they do say when they send down the second tanks, they do say, hey, just so you know, you're increasing your chances of getting nitrogen narcosis by okay. taking the second by taking. Tank. So keep an eye on each other and yeah. stay where you are. Okay. Kind of I definitely thought for the longest time that it was all the bends and that they were just saying that no. what happened was the bends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bends would like, be more like if she surfaced too quickly. Yeah, that's that's why I was like, mm-hmm. she also like at this point, she's gonna have to go in the hyperbaric chamber no matter how slowly mm-hmm. she, she goes surfaces yeah. because she was at that depth for way too long. Yeah. So would show that. Yeah. 
But yeah, I uh, same as you. I wanted to see the like the post. I think it would have been cool to see like an ending, or they could have been. It would have been sad. Yeah, but honestly, I think it would have made it a better movie. Yeah, I think having some other than her just like coming up with the Coast Guard, I was like, like some resolution. Don't where care. They say this is what actually happened to your sister. She actually got narked and just wandered away. She didn't even get eaten by. She it. didn't even get bit. Yeah, 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 always made some alternate story kind of thing mm-hmm. where they had been narked for longer and imagined a lot of the movie and then they actually showed what should have happened I think it would have made for a better movie because you didn't have that much attachment to the characters in the beginning before their accident but kind of towards the end I mean depends on who you are I still was like fight them but <laughs> towards the end we're on the shark side yeah always on the shark side but towards the end you do sort of like at least care about them a little bit more than you did at the beginning yeah so I think it would have made it a better movie actually if I cared more about the with, about Claire Holt's character not gonna lie she was less annoying for me than Mandy Morris yep Mandy just yeah, this yeah, screaming, I was like I think she was supposed to be because she was like an ex- that newer diver she was kind of yeah. supposed to be annoying almost I wonder what her boyfriend thinks now they should have ended it with him texting her being like I'm so sorry I still love you <laughs> Yeah. oh you're so cool you risked your life want to get back together but I would have I think it would have made it a better movie had we have heard I was just unsatisfied yeah. I think I it would have like, been much I better I watched with this crappy movie with a crappy ending I wonder if the second one will like have like a story. news report it is but it's still in Mexico um, and a very similar isn't it in the cenotes? Diver- huh it takes place like in the cenotes uh huh. Like they're like shark. high schoolers cage diving, not cage diving, cave, cave, yeah. cave diving. So, stupid. so I wonder if like it'll start out with like, oh, did you hear about that? That those sisters. I'm kind of wondering if they'll do mm. that, and maybe we get like a closure if it's like a same world situation. Hmm, I wonder. Well, if you want us to watch the second one, let us know. Um, but yeah, I don't honestly have anything else to, to say about the movie. If you had to rate it out of 10, what would you rate it? I'd probably give it like a two. Cause I also just don't like the act. Cause like with other ones, like it's it's fun, but it's not as fun as like Sharknado or mm-hmm. Shark to Puss. Those are fun. And you yeah. can really get rid of like part of me. It's Any like reality. The, the dive. I think before I knew about the diving stuff, it was maybe like a five. Cause I was like, I know the shark stuff's wrong, but like I think shark movies can be fun. Mm-hmm. Because I understand, like, why an animal is seen as scary. I totally understand why it's people like are scared of sharks. reality versus just, like, Yeah, but I'm like, you know, it's not a super realistic when you get into the nitty gritties of sharks. But then now that I know the dive stuff, it, like, You're just, just like, I can't watch this. I can't. Like, you should have died. Yeah, I, I would say if we're just looking at it for entertainment value, maybe a three. Mm-hmm. It gets knocked down at least a point for just being. I think it'd be fun with like outrageous. all the, like a group of people. Like I'd put it on with like people who've never seen it. I'd be like, yeah, and people maybe who know about the inaccuracies to like laugh at it. Yeah, I think it's it's a funny movie. Like it's fun to watch. But One it's Ocean not, Movie Night. But even then, it's not even that good of a movie. Yeah, that's where I, I, it doesn't even go higher. You know, like it'd be one thing if it was a really good, inaccurate movie. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah but it's not really even that great of a movie so it's kind of like meh I would give it like probably same like a two out of ten it's not I would rewatch it just if people had it on like it's not like I would never turn the tv on again but I wouldn't go out of my way to rewatch it yeah whereas like I do that with other ones because I think they're great Mm -hmm. in a bad way I think they're great in a bad way yeah well if you have watched 47 meters down and you want to tell us about the parts that you thought were the funniest the most inaccurate the best parts if there are any please feel free to comment down below let us know what you guys think um next week we are going to go slightly more serious route we're actually going to record it here in just a second but we are going to be discussing the new netflix documentary seaspiracy we both just watched it spoiler alert we both cried so it's going to be definitely a more serious talk but I actually overall thought it was a pretty good documentary so we're going to get into that next so make sure to watch that before 
uh, our next episode. But until then, thank you so much for being part of our Marine Bio Movie Club and we will see you next time.